Hello. So, continuing my videos on games that I own that I've only played once. And next in that list is uh, Age of Empires 3, The Age of Discovery. I think this is maybe the... I think there was maybe a previous edition uh, before this. Maybe called something a little bit different. I can't remember for sure. I know a few years ago there was another edition of this... Uh, that was done I think four or five years ago that there was a Kickstarter for and I think maybe it had better components and uh, such but this is the version I have Age of Empires 3 Age of Discovery I think it's from 2007 and uh, says I last played it in 2014 I'm guessing uh, and that was the only play I had of it and I'm guessing that's probably around the same year I got it. Um, I also have the Builders expansion that came with it and um, <clears throat> that just added I think a sixth uh, player. It added some new um, buildings. You know there's I'll show you later there's buildings for first, second, and third age. Um, it added a new worker type of builder and it added um, nations, so each uh, player color is associated with a certain nation. And all that really did is uh, there's two, each nation has a choice of two kind of like starting powers that they can get at the beginning of the game, and you choose one. Um, but that's really the only effect of the nations. So, anyway... Um, uh, I don't remember, I, I think I, I kind of enjoyed this game, so I'm not sure why I only played it one time, but that's what my BGG log says. So anyway, let me uh, get to the setup, um, how to play, and then some sample turns. Oh, and you may notice my box is a little uh, beat up, but that's because <laughs> my house was in a... Uh, tornado in 2014 and uh, so my game collection took a, a little bit of a beating although I actually only had two games completely ruined um, the rest all either survived intact or just got some box and water damage to the boxes but the rest of the games were good so anyway let me get on with the how to play Okay, well, first thing, if you're playing with the Builders expansion, like I said, each nation is associated with the color. So, like, red's associated with uh, Great Britain. Uh, purple's associated with the Italian states. Green is associated with Portugal. Yellow is Spain. Orange is Holland. And blue is France. But, um, as I was saying in the beginning, the only thing that really affects is uh, each nation will get um, a choice of like two starting powers at the beginning of the game. And they're not the same. Everyone doesn't have the same choices. But like so Great Britain has, you know, take a dollar from each player. Um, that's a one-time effect. Or plus two colonists per turn. So, uh, you know, we'll just say Great Britain chooses that and the other one goes back in the box. So each nation will do that. So like this is the Italian states. They chose plus one merchant per turn. And Portugal chose as, uh, one, plus one captain per turn. So I'm playing uh, red, uh, red, purple, and green. Now you may see these sheets right here. Those don't come with the game. Um, I printed those off of the file section of BGG. And they're pretty much a, a pretty good player aid. Um, tells you the turn sequence and the actions and gives you a place to put your um, figures that you're going to use for the game and, and gives you kind of a chance of success at doing discoveries which we'll talk about later but yeah the, these are just printed off from BGG they don't come with the game so that's what that is so once you've chosen your color which is also your nation and chosen your starting power you put one of your uh, figures up here on the zero space of the victory point track. 
Then you'll randomly determine your turn order and put uh, your figures on uh, this track according to the turn order. Then uh, the first player will take uh, 10, the gold is worth 10 um, money. Second player will take 11 and the uh, third player will take 12. Then in each of these regions on the board, you will place uh, one of these random discovery tokens. So you'll randomize these and put one in each region. Some of them, they kind of don't fit very well, but you put it face down. Let me get that done. I'll come back. Okay, I've got one of those discovery tokens on each region of the board except the Caribbean and uh, you don't put a discovery token um, in the Caribbean at the beginning of the game. It's um, considered already discovered. Then you'll also, uh, each region or, or New World Territory um, has a trade good pictured on it and you will uh, take one of the trade good tokens and place the matching trade good um, on each of these territories. So I've already done that. And you'll separate these capital buildings uh, into the different ages, first, second, and third age, and put the stacks near the board. And then uh, since the game starts in the first age, you reveal five of these capital buildings from the first age. Then the remaining trade goods that weren't placed in the board are uh, normally placed in a pile or I keep mine in a bag and you uh, randomly draw four and set them next to this trades good, trade goods um, space. Alright, there's four. You place a merchant ship in the merchant shipping area. Then here in the colonist dock space, um, there's only a certain number of spaces that are available, and that's two times the number of players minus one. So since I'm playing with three players, um, that would be two times three is six minus one is five. Only five spots are available. So you put a merchant ship to block off you know the first uh, spot after what's available so that you know only those first five are available during the game and you put a ship on uh, turn one of the turn track and each player gets five uh, starting basic colonists those uh, just kinda look like a guy carrying wood and they look the same for each player color. All the pieces look the same for each player color. They're just in a different color. So five uh, colonists for each player to start. All right, so how does the game play? Well, first thing each player will do in turn order <clears throat> is take one of their um, colonists and choose one of the actions, one of the spots here on the board to place their colonists. So, what are they? All right, the first uh, spots here are to choose a new turn order. So, if you put your colonists there, then on the next turn you'll be the first player. And also you'll get one coin if another person puts a player here to be second player then they'll they'll get two coins and so forth all right the next uh, spot is the colonist dock and the first player to put one there will start in space one and remember I said you can only put in a three-player game up to five spaces and uh, when a player takes his or his colonist or specialist off of here, he can put them into an all 
already colonized territory. Now, at the beginning of the game, I mean, not colonized, uh, already discovered territory. At the beginning of the game, only the Caribbean or Caribbean, however you want to say it, is uh, already um, discovered. So that's the only place you could go at the very beginning of the game. Once these other territories are discovered, then you can place your um, colonists or specialists there. Next um, space here is the trades goods space. You know, starting from left to right, players that place a, a person here get to take one of the trades goods, trade goods over here. And those uh, will count for getting you income during the game, and then at the end of the game, they uh, count for victory points. Um, the merchant shipping, whoever puts the most um, colonists or specialists in here gets to take the merchant ship in uh, each round, and you can use that as a wild card um, when scoring your trade goods, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Next thing is your capital buildings. If you put a figure in there, then, you know, starting from left to right, you remove your figure and you get to choose one of the available capital buildings. Um, in age one, they cost um, 10 gold. In age two, they cost 14. And age three will end up costing 20. All right, the next space is the discovery space. Um, you put um, colonists or specialists in there and when you figure you have enough you don't have to remove them every turn you this is the one space where you can leave your colonists from turn to turn when you have enough that you think you can um, discover a territory then you say how many of the colonists and specialists you have in this um, space that you want to send to try to colonize one of the new territories and uh, then you'll flip over one of these discovery tiles and just for an example we'll look at this one so <laughs> this is one of the hardest ones you have to have at least five colonists to be able to beat this one but if the number of colonists you're sending um, is equal to or greater than the number of Native Americans shown here then you colonize that territory and you get um, the reward in this number of coins if you sent soldiers you get an, a bonus coins per soldier sent and then it's worth victory points at the end and um, the figures here each one counts as one but if you send uh, captains which we'll go over the individual specialist figures here in a little bit. But if you send a captain, um, or if you have a captain here in this space, it actually counts as two figures. All right, then you've got the specialist space here. So for each um, figure you put in here and remove, um, in this space you get a missionary, in this space you get a merchant, soldier, captain, and in this one you can pay five to get any one of these or because I'm playing with the builders expansion you can also get a builder um, at no cost from this space and then finally warfare and if you have a figure in there you can have battles in the territories where you have figures with soldiers and um, the other player has figures so each round, as I said, going in uh, player order, you'll take turns placing your figures. Um, at the beginning, you start with five colonists. And I'll just show you the other figure types. This is a captain. This is, this is a soldier. This is a builder. This is a missionary, a little bent there, and this is a merchant. And they can act as a regular colonist or they each have a special uh, power which we'll talk about here shortly. 
So after the players have taken turns placing their figures on the various spaces, then you start um, and I think in the rules they call the spaces event boxes but then you start uh, executing the event boxes one at a time top to bottom left to right so Then after all the event boxes have been uh, executed, next thing you do is get income from your trade goods. So eventually when you have enough trade goods, you'll get income um, for three of a kind, you get three coins, for four of a kind, you get six coins, or for three, any three different, so like if you had indigo fur gold, that's worth one coin. So, um, and as I said, if these merchant shipping, if you get that ship, you can use that as a wild. So, you know, if you had two indigo and you had this mer merchant ship, that would be a three of a kind. So everybody will score their um, trade goods for income. And then you'll uh, resolve your building benefits. So eat, some of these buildings, they have an, uh, an immediate benefit. And some of them will give you uh, something like this one, trade routes, it gives you plus one merchant each turn. So after you've done your income with your trade goods, then you'll get benefit any benefits you get each turn from your buildings that you've bought if you've purchased any. Then you'll refresh the board. You'll uh, put out new buildings to make, you know, um, to get five out there again so if two had been bought you would replace two if you end up going into the second age then you'll um, use the second age buildings and when you go into the third age you'll use the third age buildings trade goods uh, you'll refresh those you'll um, any remaining that weren't taken <clears throat> during the turn will be put back in the pile and you'll get four new ones and you'll put a new merchant ship in the merchant shipping space if that if this one was taken. Then finally, you'll receive uh, five new uh, colonists um, to be used again the next turn, and you'll advance the turn marker to the next turn. So, in age one, there's three turns. In age two, there's three turns. And in age three, there's three turns. And at the end of the, uh, after the third turn, before you go to age two, you'll do some victory point scoring, depending on who has the most um, colonists in a territory. Once a territory, um, once a player has at least three colonists in a territory, then they get to take the good that's there, the trade good that's good that is there. And then also from that point on, that territory can be scored. So when you get to the end of an age, you'll score. And for each territory that's scorable, that, ha that somebody has at least three of their figures there, uh, the person that has the most um, colonists there will get six points. The person that has the second most colonists there will get two points and if there's a builder in that territory the person that um, has the most will get an additional four points so ten points and the personal that has the set person that has the second most will get an additional two points so four points for second place but that's only what, where there's a builder And you'll do that scoring at the end of the first age, the end of the second age, and at the end of the third age. But then there's additional scoring at the end of the third age. Um, buildings are worth victory points. These discovery tiles are worth victory points. Um, you'll then uh, get victory points for your uh, trade goods instead of... You, you will get... Um, 
money for your trade goods um, like you normally do at the end of the third age but then when you're doing the end game scoring you'll get victory points instead of money for your trade goods and after that final scoring whoever has the most victory points uh, wins the game so why don't we go through some sample turns <laughs> because I don't think my explanation there was very good but I think if you see some sample turns then you'll see how it works okay so at the beginning of the game randomly chosen uh, red is the first player so they get everyone starts with five colonists so he gets to choose where he wants to place his his uh, first colonists so let's just say he wants to go on the colonist dot so he can start putting play people into the Caribbean which is the only discovered um, territory at the beginning of the game all right well second is purple so now he decides where he wants to put one of his guys and um, we'll say he wants to get a trade good so he puts a guy there and green is third um, let's say he wants to start putting some guys in the discovery to discover some of the new territories so that's back to red he decides what he wants to do so uh, he decides maybe he wants to get a trade good and then purple let's just say he wants to get a merchant so he'll put a guy there and green uh, he might want to get one of these capital buildings so he's going to put a guy on there red again he's still got three guys left so maybe he wants to get one of those capital buildings also because they give pretty good bonuses so he'll put a guy there and and purple he will say he wants to put uh, maybe he wants to go first next time so he's going to put himself there and then green uh, well, maybe he wants to get a uh, captain, so he'll put a guy there, and then red, um, maybe he wants to at least go second next turn, so he'll put a guy there, and then purple again, so let's say he's going to put a guy in the discovery box, and green, well, he knows if he goes up here uh, he's going to be third like he is now but at least he'll get three coins so he's going to go ahead and put put a guy there now red's last guy um we'll say maybe he wants to get uh in the discovery box also and then purple's last guy well he decides he wants to get a capital building also and green's last guy eh, he doesn't want red to be the only guy going to the colony so he'll put a guy there too okay so everybody's placed their five starting figures so now we start executing starting with the initiative box now we don't actually change the turn order at this point we do that um, later but we do give out the coins for what space you've chosen so purple chose first so he gets one coin so that'll go into his bank uh, red chose to go second so he gets two coins so it will go into his bank and green chose third so he gets three coins and those will go into his bank now next turn that's the order they'll be going in we'll shift those up and they'll be going in purple red green instead of red purple green but at this point that's all you do so now you start with the colonist dock and take your player off there off of the, off the colonist dock space and put them in any available colony or discovered colony uh, or territory and at the beginning of the game only the Caribbean is so uh, red will place his figure there 
and green will place his figure there. Now the first person to get three figures here gets that trade good and also then it will make the Caribbean scoreable but right now they just each have one so nobody gets that trade good and it's still not scoreable. Alright next uh, purple put a figure on the uh, trade goods space so he gets to choose one of these and we'll just say now these numbers here are just how many of them are available in the game it's not any anything about how what their value is it's just there you know there's four indigos total in the game so he'll choose an indigo and just put that um, actually you know these sheets here that I have printed out <laughs> if I had room you put your trade goods at the bottom and your buildings over here on the right but I don't <laughs> I don't have room to do that um, so I'm just gonna put my trade good right here but then red you know he takes his figure and he gets a trade good also so he'll let's say he's gonna take this gold since he knows there's five of those and I'll just put his uh, trade goods right here these are not used in the game that's just from the pile that I shuffled and cho chose from all right so that's trade good all right nobody chose merchant shipping if somebody had put a figure in there then they would get this ship but nobody did so now we go on to capital buildings so greens first he gets to uh, choose one of these buildings to get so he's going to choose this one, Indentured Servitude. He gets one free colonist in the X space on the colonist dock each turn. So remember I said there's only five spaces available in a three-player game, but there's also this X and Y space. Well, this building lets um, Green get a um, one of his colonists for free in that X space each each turn. So he'll be able to... Um, always have at least one colonist there so he puts that there and he'll execute that when we get to the buildings phase the resolve building benefits phase but that does cost him 10 in age one any building costs 10 so he's got to put 10 gold in the bank leaving him just five okay red's next so he throws that colonist over there and he gets to buy one of these so uh, we'll just say he's going to buy this trade routes where he'll get one merchant each turn. So he's got to pay 10 for that, leaving him only two. And finally purple, he gets one. So he's got three left to choose from. And uh, we'll just say he's going to take the spoils of war so I can show. So this is just an immediate effect. Um, and it's only good for one time, and that's now. So he gets to take one merchant ship. So uh, he'll just take one out of the spares. Now he'll have that to use as a wild card with his trade goods. And that finishes the capital buildings. So you'll see when we go to the next turn, we'll have to put three new ones out. So next we come to the discovery space. And you ex execute that in turn order, which is red, purple, green right now. But each player, red, purple, and green, only have one person in there. So if you look at this chart, um, it says you only have a 12.5% chance of being successful of discovering, being able to beat one of those discovery tiles. So I think nobody at this point is going to try to do that. So they're just going to leave their figures there. So now we come to the specialists, and purple is first, um, so he's going to get a merchant. So he'll take this merchant, and he'll put that on his available figures for next round. So um, any figures you get from here, um, you, you will have them available to use next round. You don't get to go ahead and place them during this turn but you'll get to place them on the next turn and so the same for green he gets a captain so 
So he takes captain and puts that with his, you know, where his available figures for next round will be. And that's it for all the uh, event spaces for this round. So next we go to the income. Um, nobody has enough trade goods to get any money. You need at least three different ones to at least get one money. Everybody's just got one trade good. Well, only purple and red have a trade good. Um, green didn't even get one. So nobody gets any income at this point. And the next thing you do is resolve your building benefits. Well, next thing, yeah, resolve your bills. So Britain will get plus two colonists and plus one merchant. So he's going to take these two colonists and put them in his available figures plus the merchant. And next, um, the Italian states, he gets plus one merchant and that's it. So he gets... Alright, so he'll put that merchant there with his available figures for the next round. And then uh, Portugal gets uh, one free colonist in the X space. So we'll go ahead and take a colonist, put it up there in the X space. That'll already be there. And then he gets one captain. So there's his captain, and that will be in his available figures. All right, so that's all the building benefits. So now we refresh the board. So that's when we'll put... Um, the new buildings out so we have five and then we put these um, back in the bag and draw four new trade goods so one two three four so we got a fur fish silver and cattle and we would put a new merchant ship here if this one had been taken, but it wasn't on the last turn. And now everybody gets five new colonists, along with any figures that they've, you know, gotten from their buildings or that they uh, bought from one of the, the specialist event boxes. So they get five new, just generic colonists. So I'll do that for each player. Okay, I got the five. Uh, regular colonists along with everybody's um, specialists that they got or in Britain's case they got the two extra so everybody's got their figures and then the last thing we do is advance the turn marker um, if we were at the end of an age we would do some scoring this is probably a good time to talk about what the different specialists do so the builder that comes with the builder's expansion, um, as I kind of talked about earlier, if he's in a territory when you're doing scoring, he adds uh, extra four victory points for the person with the most um, colonists and an extra two for the person with the second most colonists. But their other power is if you use one um, on the capital building space, then you pay $5 less for the capital building than you normally would. So that's what the builder's for. All right. The captain, um, if you use him in this merchant ship shipping space, he counts as two figures. So remember, the person with the most, which totals the most, gets that ship. So the captain counts as two. Um, and also in this discovery space, which I already mentioned, when you're using your figures to try to um, colonize, you know, a new territory, the captain counts as two figures for that also. Okay, the merchant, he also counts as two figures in the merchant shipping space, just like the captain, and that's noted here. Or... If you use him on the colonist dock to send as a colonist to a discovered territory, you get a bonus of five dollars or five coins when you do that with a merchant. 
the missionary, if I can get him in focus there, when you use him on the colonist dock and send him to a discovered uh, territory, you get to put uh, him plus one additional colonist. Um, so that's his bonus. He gives you an additional colonist when you use him on the colonist dock to send to a discovered territory. And finally, the soldiers. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you use them in the discovery box um, to try to beat one of these discovery tiles, um, if you're successful, then you get a bonus for every soldier that you used. So in this case, you'd get a bonus of five coins per soldier that you used um, for your total. And uh, the other thing, if you send them on the colonist dock to a discovered territory, then um, if you take the warfare action, they can be used to an eliminate an opponent's um, colonist in the same territory as you. And the, the one thing I forgot to do before you advance the turn marker, you go ahead and uh, change the turn order. So uh, purple chose to go first, so he moves up there. Red chose to go second, so he moves up there. And green chose to go third, so he stays there. And then these just go back into your available pool. Um, not Not the ones you can use, just your pool of used or available units when you can get them. So to be clear, the only units you can use, you know, on your turn are the ones you've gathered. Um, and every time you take one off of the board, it just goes into your available pool, but that's not one you can use, um, you know, the next turn. The only ones you can use the next turn are the ones you've gotten for putting on here, or if you get it from, uh, you know, one of your buildings, <clears throat> or, uh, of course, every round you get five regular generic colonists. So I'm going to play this next turn off camera, and then maybe part of the third turn, and then I'll <clears throat> probably show the execution of the third turn, and then a round of scoring, and then that should probably give you a good idea of how the game plays. All right, I'm still in turn two here, but I've already placed figures and executed some of these event boxes, but I'm down here to the discovery, and I wanted to kind of show how that works a little bit. So uh, purple is first in turn order. He's only got two guys, so he's not going to try. Uh, red second in turn order, but he's only got two guys. Um, he's not going to try. So next is um, green. Well, he's got three guys and a captain, and the captain's worth two. So he says, I'm going to send all my guys. You choose how many you want to send out of that box. So he's going to send all of them. So that's a total of five, because three plus the captain's worth two, so five. So we'll just say um, he wants to discover Canada. So now you flip this over. He only needed three to beat it. So... He did five, he's successful. Now these just all get discarded, except one. He gets to put one colonist there for discovering that territory. These guys are used now. They just go into the back to the pool. Um, now he gets two coins for discovering that territory. And we'll put that in his pile over here. And then he didn't use any soldiers. If he had used soldiers, he would have gotten two additional coins per soldier used. But then he keeps this discovery tile, and it's worth five victory points at the end of the game. So I just put it over here in his play area. Now, um, again, he doesn't get this um, trade good until somebody has three of their colonists in here they don't get to take that trade good and this area is not scorable until somebody has at least three of their people in there but people can now send colonists there from the colonist dock so now because canada's discovered and the caribbean's discovered those are the only two places that people can send colonists to currently
So I just wanted to show how that works. I'm going to go ahead and play again uh, off camera for a bit. I'm ready to start turn three. I played through turn two. See the figures that uh, Red has there. He's got some a soldier, some colonists, captain. Uh, Purple doesn't have near as many figures this turn. He's got his five colonists that he gets every round and uh, a merchant. And green, he's got his five colonists he gets every round, a missionary, a captain, and a merchant. And uh, green is first this round, so I'm going to go ahead and do the placement, um, and then I'll come back. All right, so I had everybody take their turns in turn order, placing their figures, and we'll go ahead and execute the event boxes. So the first one, initiative, Red put a guy there so he'll be fit first next turn, and that gives him one um, coin. So I'll put that in his honey. Uh, green's going to be second uh, next turn, and that gives him two coins. So I'll put that in his pile. Alright, that's an, the initiative event boxes. So next is the colonist dock. Red has one first. Now we got another colony that's available. But if Red puts one here in the Caribbean, he'll, that makes three for him and he'll be able to get this sugar um, trade good. So he'll put that in his pile. Green is next with a missionary. Um, that allows him to put an extra colonist so he's going to put this missionary um, here in Canada and then he gets an extra colonist so he put that in Canada also and now since he has three in there he can take this fur trade good put that over here with his stuff alright purple is next so he's going to go ahead and come over here to Canada also so when that, that scored he figures he can at least get the second place uh, scoring point and uh, Red's thinking kind of along the same line so he's going to put a guy in Canada also and finally Green has his power down here from his building which allows him one extra guy and he's going to go ahead and put that guy here in uh, the Caribbean so he can at least get when this is scored at least get second most points there all right next we come to the trade good event so green had a guy there first so he gets to choose one of these trade goods only one he has so far is a fur so it doesn't really matter he doesn't think which one uh, he'll take this indigo put it with his stuff then red has a guy and uh, he's got fur, gold, fish, and sugar. So might be smart of him to take this fish. So he'll have two of those. All right, next is purple. Um, he's got silver, cattle, indigo. So he would have liked to got that indigo that green took. But oh well, he'll just take this coffee. And finally, green has another guy in there. So he will take the last coffee, and uh, that gives him three different, so he'll have one set where he'll be able to get at least one gold out of that. You come to merchant shipping again, nobody chose that, I'm not sure why, somebody probably should have, because it's good to have those as a wild when you're doing your income, but oh well, didn't happen. Alright, now we come to capital buildings, purple put a guy here, so he got to spend ten since we're in the first age and he can choose one of these buildings so he thinks he's going to take this one conquest of the Inca Empire and immediately take twenty dollars or twenty gold or whatever so he's got that adding that to his pool he thought that might be a good idea because starting next round the um, age two buildings cost 14 instead of 10 so he thought it might be good to have some more money all right green he gets to choose a capital building now that costs him 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's all his money 
And he decides to take this one, uh, plus one colonist each turn. So that'll give him an extra guy to place every turn. Alright, well that's all of the capital building, so now we come to the discovery. If anyone wants to try to do that, and we go in turn order, which is green, purple, red. So, green, he says, yeah, I'm going to do it because I've got a captain. He counts as two. And I'm going to send both of these guys also. So I've got a total of four, which is a pretty good chance. According to this chart on this player aid, that gives me a 87% chance. So, um, we know what this one is from sample earlier. So, uh, let's just say he wants to try Peru. Let's see what we got. Okay, he only needs two to be successful, and he's got a total of four. So he successfully colonizes this, so he gets to put one uh, colonist in there. And then he didn't have any soldiers, so he doesn't get that bonus. So he gets one coin, and this will be worth four victory points at the end. So he'll put that there, get his coin. All right, next purple. He decides, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to discover two. I've got one, two three four guys um, I'm surprised he used that merchant there <laughs> I think I may not have noticed that was a merchant there was probably better use for him but oh well he used a merchant so that's still a total of four so uh, let's just say he's gonna try New England up here let's see what we got yep we only needed three so he only gets one coin um, he didn't have any soldiers, so he doesn't get the bonus, and that'll be worth five victory points. So we'll just put that over here with his stuff, and he gets one coin. All right. Finally, we have Red, and he's going to do um, Discovery also. He's got a captain, so that's worth two. And then uh, three, four, and he is sending one soldier. And I keep knocking pieces off over here. But anyway, that's a total of two, three, four, five. So, even I think we know this one is five. I'm going to go ahead and do it just so we get it out of here. But this one's five. I have a total of five. So that gives me four coins. And per soldier, I get an additional five coins. So that's a total of nine. I think I'll just put one back and get a ten. All right, there's my tan. I get to put a colonist uh, here in New Granada. And I did put a colonist. I'd forgotten to do that when Purple took New England there. But I did that now. And then Red will keep this. And it'll be worth seven victory points at the end. All right, and lastly, we come to the specialist. Purple is going to get a missionary to be used next turn. Okay, so there's his missionary. We'll put that with his units that will be available next turn. And Red's getting all the rest. He's getting a merchant, a soldier, a captain, and he'll take a builder here. So merchant, soldier, and merchant, soldier, captain, and builder for Red. All right, got all those. So those will be available for him next turn. We'll along with whatever other colonists, his five regular colonists, and what he gets from his buildings. And that's it. That's all the event boxes. So, uh, next thing we do is the trade good income. So, uh, it looks like it's he's still just going to get the one. He doesn't have a three of a kind or a four of a kind. So, just for three different... Um, he can get one coin. If if somebody had taken that mer if he had taken that merchant shipping, he could have used a wild and had another three. Um, or he could have had a three of a kind with the fish. But anyway, he didn't. So he gets one coin of income here. All right. Um, purple looks like the same for thing. He actually has two ships. But you can't use two in a set, so he couldn't do that and get like three of a kind. You can only use one ship in a set. So he really can't get three of a kind. 
So he's in the same boat where he just gets one coin for a set of three different, any three. And green is the same. He just has uh, any three, so one coin for him. All right, that's the income. Next, we receive, do the building benefits. So red will get plus two colonist and plus one merchant. So there's his merchant and his two colonists. So those will be available for him to use next turn. Plus the five he'll get that everybody gets every, every round. Um, purple gets one uh, merchant and five dollars and that's it so one merchant and five dollars or five gold so you can see next turn uh, purple will have his five colonists that everybody gets and then he'll have his one merchant and his missionary and green because he gets this he gets a colonist um, he gets to put the one colonist in the space X up here on the colonist dock. And he gets a captain. So he'll get one captain and one colonist. And then he'll end up getting the five colonists he gets every turn here shortly. So next we refresh the board. But instead of putting out um, age one buildings, because we'll be going to the first step on age two, we actually clear off these last uh, age one buildings and we put out five age two buildings. They usually have a little bit more better powers or whatever, but they remember they cost 14 now. Then we got to do the four trade goods. Okay, so we've got the four trade goods put out. And then uh, if somebody had taken this merchant ship, we would replace that. And now everybody receives their five new colonists. Now you can see red's going to have uh, quite a few... Well, I'll just put them down here. He's going to have quite a, quite a few more players to place than everybody else. I mean, purple gets his five. So there's purple's five colonists. And then green's got to get his five. All right. So green's got his five. So uh, everyone's going to have fewer people to place out the, you know, then red will have this next turn. All right. Now we'll res resolve the new turn order. So red will be first this next turn. Green will be second. And that leaves purple being third. And this guy I knocked over. <laughs> And now, unlike the other end of the other turns, because it's the end of the first age, the end of the third turn, we do scoring of the discovered colonies that have at least three people of one color. So Canada was discovered. Um, it does have three greens in it. So um, he has the most there, so he gets six points. If there was a builder in there, then it would be worth ten, but it's only worth six. So green gets to move his uh, thing up to six points on the victory track. Now normally the second player would get uh, two points, but because they're tied, there's a tie for second, nobody gets uh, points for second place. Now here New England is discovered, but because somebody doesn't have at least three figures in there, three of their own figures, that doesn't get scored. And that's why the... Um, trade good is still there also and that's going to be the same for Peru and New Granada those don't get scored because at least one player doesn't have three figures in there but the Caribbean does and it's a tie between red and green so so instead of somebody getting six points the two players tied for first place just each get two points so that's uh, red and green so green will get an additional two points and red will get two points and then uh, because there was a tie for first place 
then second place doesn't get to score. Um, and so that's for this this turn. That's going to be all the scoring there is. And then we advance the turn marker to the second age. So that's how the game plays. Um, of course, as more colonies get uh, colonists and more colonies get discovered, you know, by the end of the second age, uh, people are getting a lot higher scores um, from having figures out there. And builders will get on there, and you know, again, that adds uh, points for scoring. And as people get more trade goods, they get a lot you know more money which of course you need because the build buildings become more expensive and then eventually people with in my examples nobody used the warfare action um, but pretty soon I think somebody might um, and again the way that works is if you have uh, a soldier um, in one of the New World territories and you take the warfare action you can uh, you can choose to do just one battle, and so maybe just pick one territory, and uh, for every soldier you have, you get to eliminate one of the one opponent. You can only choose one opponent to um, be in a battle against. So, say Green had a soldier here, and uh, he said he picks purple. So for every soldier he has he gets to eliminate one of purples. And if purple had soldiers for every soldier he had, he'd get to eliminate one of greens. So you can do that with a warfare action, or you can pay 10 gold and say, I'm having a war with a certain color faction. And then you can, every territory where you have soldiers and that color that you choose to be at war with has soldiers, then you can do a battle in each of those. Um, so, but you do have to pay 10 gold for that. Whereas for free, you can just choose one territory to battle someone. So people will start, start taking that as they get soldiers and they want to eliminate other people's figures so they can get the score for most, um, you know, most, uh, colonists in a territory. But, uh, anyway, that's how it goes. Then you'll go to the, into the second age and then you'll put the third, um, age buildings out and there's only two turns in the third age and uh, scoring at the end of the game um, after you finish the third age you score just like I showed at the end of the first age but there's a couple of differences then to d do final scoring then players get to add up any scores they get for victory points on the uh, there are tiles or some buildings that come out. I think there's one over here now. Like this building um, is worth five victory points at the end. So some buildings will be worth victory points at the end. Your discovery tokens are worth victory points at the end. And an additional difference when you're scoring after the end of the third age, you'll score your um, trade goods as normal to get cash, but... Um, then you'll also score your trade goods one more time, but instead of getting cash, it'll be victory points. And one thing I forgot uh, to mention that you can do that came with the Builder's expansion. This isn't in the regular rule book, but at the end of the of each age, you can purchase victory points. You know, one victory point for um, and at the end of age one, you can buy one victory point for each gold or dollar you spend the end of age, age two, um, well, you can see it there. So um, when you're doing scoring at the end of the age, you can also buy some victory points. So at the end of age one, it's pretty cheap, but at the end of age three, it's ridiculous. I don't think anybody would get very many points for that. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention. Once, once all the territories... Um, have been discovered and you've done the discovery tiles on those since there's only nine of those or eight actually I think at the beginning of the game you can still use this discovery um, space but then you'll start um, using these cards to go against and you, they're, they're, I think they're a little more difficult to beat um, 
this one requires five but then you get the same they're still worth victory points at the end and still worth cash but you just don't get to put a colonist anywhere when you do that you just keep the card so you'll know you got those victory points at the end and that's it that's a age of empires age of discovery i like it i'm not sure why i only played it once and i think the one time i played it um, I played it against my younger daughter who at that time, you know, was only probably six years old. So probably not a proper opponent, but I actually, um, enjoy this game. So I got to remember that, uh, whenever COVID's over, I guess, and get back to playing with some, um, some of my buddies, I'm, I'm going to suggest this game, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.